the biggest party of the summer is finally here, WWE SummerSlam. We have the Beast taking on Randy Orton. We have the debut of the Universal Championship. How does SummerSlam go down? Well, stay tuned. You know what? Screw this opening. Let's get right to the point, okay? First of all, SummerSlam was a huge disappointment. Now, this is just me talking. I'm allowed to state my opinion. But you know what? The whole show wasn't bad. We will get to the parts that I did not like when we get to that part. But you know what? We're going to open up with a two-hour pre-show because you know what? SummerSlam needs to be like WrestleMania. But you know what? Let's get to the pros. They changed the whole scenery around. This actually is a whole new SummerSlam. Got a nice star that they're walking out on now. It doesn't look like Raw. It doesn't look like SmackDown. It actually looks like its own thing. I'm like, okay, they're putting some effort into SummerSlam. And we start the pre-show with the clusterfuck of the 12-man tag. You know, honestly, this had potential. And I'm not talking about the match. I'm talking about SmackDown's tag teams had potential and they did not just do anything with this it was basically a clusterfuck match where the superstars got their spots in before the match ended the faces go over and uh they beat the heels it doesn't matter the match amounts to nothing then we get two more pre-show matches which is uh Sami Zayn and Noah versus the Dudley Boys didn't see it, so all I know is that the Dudley Boys lost again then we get Cesaro versus Sheamus Sheamus gets round one in the best of seven I didn't see that match neither, but you know what? We're getting into SummerSlam now. So you know what? SummerSlam starts off with the boys, Enzo and Cash, who do enough New York references to last the whole arena. They shout out Jay-Z. They shout out Old Blue Eyes, Frank Sinatra. They shout out Biggie. Enzo is just being Enzo and Cash. They're hot. Great way to kick off SummerSlam versus Jerry RK. RK, oh, good Lord. Jerry KO. Now, like I said, this is a good match, good solid opener. Um, it looked like Enzo blotched the finish a little bit with the uh, pop-up power bomb into the cold breaker. It looked like it hurt. It probably did. That was probably one of the first of many blotches tonight. But Chris Jericho gets the pin on Enzo, and they get the win. But you know what? It was a solid opener to open up SummerSlam. So I'm like, I'm sitting back, like, okay, let's get excited about this. Next up, we have the women's championship match. Wait, hold on. We on match two, right? Two, and they're putting the women's championship match up now. Okay, maybe they don't want to be diluted with all the other main events. Who knows? So we get Charlotte versus Sasha Banks. Now, honestly, I knew these women's gonna try to put on a good match. They're at SummerSlam, the second biggest pay per view of the year. They're gonna try to put on the show. So what happens is. Charlotte has Sasha up on the top rope. It looks like what Charlotte's trying to do is to jump down and do a backbreaker to work on the back. That's the story they're going to tell on this match. But what happened was Charlotte jumps but drops Sasha. And she gets caught up on the ropes and falls down on her head. And it kind of like contorts her back. And throughout the whole rest of the match, Sasha was favoring her back. And it could tell that the back, her back was really hurting her. And she was trying to do moves she couldn't stand. She was trying to do roles that wasn't working. She was trying to do her different spots. But you know what? Homegirl fought through it the best way she could. And they did try to have a good match, especially the spot with the razor's edge off the top into a hurricane runner. I know that hurt. But Charlotte does pick up the win on Sasha. When she tries to go for the bank statement, rolls her up for a three count. Now, Charlotte has the championship. It has been rumored that Sasha Banks was legitimately injured from that botch that happened so she is going to be taking off all w live shows we're going to, have to find out tomorrow when raw happens or we know news starts getting around and everybody like myself is updating on youtube next up we get the miz versus apollo cruz for the intercontinental championship now once again apollo is looking really strong in this match that's how i knew he's probably going to lose he had a good uh, amount of arsenal but he just has no character. He has no mic skills enough to get him the championship belt. So they're not going to put it on him just yet. But it's just enough to put him on a big pay-per-view. To put him against The Miz. You know, to help get Power Crew some credibility. And he did look good in this match. But The Miz does come out and with the with the Skull Crusher finale. And picks up the win to retain any kind of championship. So, it was what it was. Now, the match that, you know, the rematch. AJ Styles. The phenomenal AJ Styles versus the face that runs the place, John Cena. 
Now look. Everybody knows the track record. We know about Bray Wyatt. We know about Rusev. We know about Kevin Owens. Hell, we know about Edge. We know about any type of things that Cena has been doing in the past 12 years. We know about Randy Orton. We know about Batista. We know about Sheamus. We know about the Nexus. We know about all these things. John Cena don't lose feuds. He lose some matches every now and then, more so as he's gotten you know older. But he don't lose feuds. I don't think Cena has lost a feud since 2004. Could be wrong. Could be 2005. But I don't think Cena has lost a feud since 2004. It's been 12 years. Now, for most recently, AJ Styles gets the knock clean victory on John Cena at Money in the Bank. John Cena gets to pin on him in a six-man tag team match at Battleground. This is no club. It's just one-on-one. -on -one. Cena versus AJ Styles. And let me tell you something. This right here was the match of the night. This match, first of all, for two guys in their late 30s, 138, 139 years old, are still just gunning it. I give Cena credit when credit is due. He pulled that moves. He did his five moves to do. Of course, everybody, you know, hates. But... There were so many reversals. There were so many near falls. When AJ Styles hit the Styles Clash the first time, I knew that wasn't going to be over. When Cena hit the attitude just for the first time, I knew that wasn't going to be over. However, when the Phenomenal Forearm didn't put Cena down, and then when Cena hit the top rope Super AA, and AJ Styles kicked out of that, and Cena is selling it so great in the corner, he's looking like, the fuck, what I got to do to keep this man down. The eyes are showing and everything. He's like, AJ Styles is on another level right now. The match goes back and forth. They got a good 20 minutes to tell a great story, which they did. A lot of near falls. This match kept me excited. This match kept me invested. This match actually brought SummerSlam in for me. It really did. And AJ Styles is about to, he's about to go for an AA. And then he reverses it into a Styles Clash. And after his top, he takes the elbow pad off and he's like, you know what? You're getting a phenomenal forearm, bare arm. And he does it. And one, two, what's going to happen? Three. AJ Styles not only beats John Cena cleanly, AJ Styles wins the rivalry between him and John Cena. Oh my. God, OMG, look, everybody was blowing up on the internet. It was just, that's how everybody was on the phone. Like, did, did y'all see that this really happened? It was a match at night. It got me invested in the SummerSlam. This is what SummerSlam is supposed to be about. Cena takes off his never give up his man, puts it in the ring. It's not a sign of retirement. I don't think it is. It's more he's going away for a little bit. The record American grid, he got the new... Uh, total Bellas in October that he's doing so there's a lot of things for Cena to be doing so he's taking a break for a little bit AJ is now the top guy on Smackdown and I can see him going for the championship now earlier we got Jon Stewart and Jon Stewart said Stephanie was mean why is Mick Foley with him first of all why was Mick Foley wearing that Prince you know <laughs> shirt going on I, I don't know who dressed him this morning but the New Day said we needed him to do a fair for us so John Stewart comes out and he takes all talks about you know fans jumping in the ring and not having your shirt tucked in when you're fighting because nobody wants to see your old man gut. Whatever. The point is he's out there to be Big E for the new day. So he goes in his best Big E impression and tries to do the oh New York City. So he tries it. Uh, not really good. But New Day come out, the usual stuff, and Cole Kings just talks to Budios. By the way, check out Budios. They're a really good treat. Does all toss out then. Dr. Anderson and Dr. Gallows comes out with, you know, the whole sample and, you know, the balls and stuff like that. So, the match goes on. And so, you know, it's a pretty simple tag team match with the New Day mostly dominating. Xavier Woods is showing some more of his athleticism with a nice little walk on the rope, hitting the elbow from across the ring. That was nice. And Kofi Kingston just running and, you know, jumping in the air and hitting the pose. And falling on gallows. And see, when you're that damn athletic, you can do anything the fuck you want to. And that's what Kofi did. And honestly, throughout the match, John Stewart tries to come in and help the New Day from getting pinned. And Gallows and Anderson, 
is about to, you know, attack him. He does a little sound like, come on, hey, club guys, club guys. Like, John Stewart is funny if he's used right. But what they do is they're trying to give him that ring post and as they're about to do it, Big E comes out, and he comes and wreaks havoc on Carl Anderson, on Luke Gallows, and, of course, the dude, they get disqualified, but they retain their titles. The club gets the win here, or Anderson, out there, Anderson, out there, Gallows, and Big E goes over to the cup that says Big E with his ball, the egg, or whatever in there, and drinks some of it and spits it out. I'm like, I don't know what that was. I don't know if it was Mountain Dew. I don't know if it was, like, Dirty Sprite. I don't know what it was. But... He drunk and spread out, and then they try to start gyrating with John Stewart in the ring. John Stewart trying to hit this little gyrating going on, but you know, Big E, he got to do it right. Big E, you know, I had to get it down with it. Whatever, right? I almost lost my damn balance. But anyway, the New Day retain the titles, but Anderson Gallows gets the win. Now, this is where SummerSlam takes the turn for me. It's like you're driving down the road, and then, you know, you know, you, you try to make that turn. It's like you slip off the wheel, and you, hey, bro, you got to try to get back on track. That's what some of Sam turned to be. So we're into the WWE Championship match, Dolph Ziggler versus Dean Ambrose. And I'm gonna be honest with you. This is the first match that did not I was not into. I was not into this match. I don't know if it was because it was getting long, because it was getting drawn. I don't know what it was, but I was not into this match at all. At all. And I think what made it worse is Zingler coming out there with the Moon Man pants or, you know, the Michael Jackson, you know, I want to rock with you, pants on. And him super kicking Dean Ambrose and him trying to flip over the barricade and it just was not working. I was just like, oh, I had that problem with this match, okay? Now, Zingler and... D they didn't have no drama. There was no believable near falls in this match. There were no believable... And then having Dean Ambrose taunt Dolph Ziggler, I hated it. It's just him doing this like, yeah, I'm going to show off. Ugh. Or him trying to do the sweet chin music. I, I didn't like any of it. And there was no drama in the match. There was no times in that match, I believe, Ziggler had the near fall that was going to win. And as soon as uh, Dean Ambrose hit the Dirty Ds, one, two, three, it was over. The match meant nothing to me. It sucked me out of SummerSlam. That was the first of many things that sucked me out of SummerSlam. Now, I was getting a little messed up, but it was time for the six women's tag match, because you know that has to come after the women's championship. We get Naomi, Carmella, and Becky Lynch versus the team of Alexa Bliss, Natalia, and supposedly Eva Marie. But who replaces Eva Marie? Brie, no, oh, excuse me, Nikki Bella. Nikki Bella comes out and replaces um, Eva Marie. She, she, she looks good. She never stops going to look good. But, you know, I watched the match. The match is what it is. Uh, Naomi's very athletic. Becky Lynch is a wrestling machine, it feels like. Uh, Carmella has ways to go. She really does. Honestly, Carmella could stay in NXT. I knew Carmella was the weakest on this team. She was going to take the pinfall. And Nikki Bella shows a new fish move, which is like a turnaround cutter. Instead of doing a rack attack, so Carmel takes the pin one, two, three, the heels win. We get a return from Nikki Bella, and she's probably going to SmackDown because there was part of a SmackDown match. So there it what it was. Okay, we got all that stuff out the way. It started to boil. I'm like, okay, you know what? Don't worry. We're going to step back in with this match. You know why? Because it is time for the United States Championship with Russo. Wait, 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 hold on. What? 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 Hold on. What? Say what? Oh, okay. I thought it was because it was a main event match. You would want to put that close to the end. Not okay. So according, it wasn't the United States Championship match. I thought it was going to be due to the promo from the back of Rusev. We get the Universal Championship match, the WWE Universal Championship match. And everybody, it's time for the big reveal. This is what the Universal Championship looks like. What the actual fuck? You know what? When they said the name, I was just like, this is what really happened. I said, no. That, I hate the name. I hate the name. Brian, maybe you should do your thing. Hashtag, give the belt a chance. The Universal Championship makes absolutely no fucking sense. What's it going to be? You, what's it going to show the galaxy and the belt? Like, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. I think what we need to do is we got to see what the belt looks like. And whatever the belt looks like, maybe it'll sell it on and it could be a legitimate championship. Wrong. Wrong again. That's not what happened. They took the same exact Dean Ambrose championship, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship, 
And you know what they did? Do you know what they did? They painted it red. No bullshit. This whole thing is red. It's nothing else. It's just Dean Ambrose belt, but red. Why does every championship have to have the big WWE in the middle of it? I understand that's the main championship, but the women's championship got the same thing. So now we got another championship with the same thing, but women's championship in all red. The thing looks terrible. I don't like it. You know what's funny? I actually like the Ambrose Championship. Because it's like a legitimate championship. It's just all this gold and red like a clown championship. If I was the YouTube champion of the world, that's what I'm wearing. But not this belt. This belt looks like a piece of shit. It really does. This belt looks, to, to me, I don't like it at all. I, I really am not a fan of this belt at all. Like... Quanto said it best. He said, you know, like when you go down there for Christmas and you got you expect a new day, like toys and everything like that, and you open up and you get socks. That's what this belt is. It's like I seen better on revealings of belts on impact. So it's you know what? Let's get to the match. The match will save it. So we got Scorpion slash Shang Song. Oh, I'm sorry, Seth Rollins versus the demon Finn Balor, oh, that we've seen on Monday already, right? Because today was supposed to be the big reveal of him. <sighs> Granted, he had different makeup on. Granted, he had the new the, the Joker sayings all up and down his body. Had the white face paint right here. Had the little dead zombie clothes and everything like that. It's fine. But we seen him already. This was stupid revealing him on Raw, and we seen him already. So, you know what? Seth Rollins and Finn Balor had a good match. The match was good. The problem is the crowd was taking out of the match due to the fact that the belt sucks. They were chanting, that belt sucks, or that belt's stupid, or this belt sucks, or blah, 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 whatever New York was chanting, because that belt looked ugly. And it took people out the match because it was like, why are these two guys fighting so hard for that belt? And honestly, I don't know. It was like Finn Balor was spamming on WWE 2K16 because he kept hitting that signature, that, that double front drop kick to, to Seth Rollins. Had to be about five times in this match. But finally, he gets the coup de grace and beats Seth Rollins cleanly for the championship. Now, don't get me wrong. The, champion, the match was good, but it's like it didn't have that big match feel because that belt was so bad. It really was. And Seth, and Ron, uh, not Ron, Seth got his fucking name wrong. I can't wait to get to him in a minute. But... Finn Balor wins, and he's going and putting his arm up. He has the belt right here. And he's just doing this, like, I'm like, he has never held the belt up at all. Like, I don't even think he likes that shit. Now, people may say, hey, the color Finn Balor only want to get away with it. I'm like, if y'all going to do that, then what y'all do, turn the Daniels belt into blue? Oh, I hope the SmackDown Women's belt is not like that at all. I don't need a big WWE with all blue around it. I, I just don't. I don't need that. I really don't. Make it. Make it your own. Make it different. Shit. Put some galaxies. Put some moons. Put a U on there. Put a big U, like in the shape with the WWE. Like make it look good. That look. That, that does not look good. And trust me, everybody on Twitter was blowing this belt the fuck up along with Dolph Ziggler's pants. Oh, oh, okay. Now it's time. Now it's time. Okay, boys and girls. Now it's time to get into it. The United States Championship match, Roman Reigns versus Rusev. The same match we saw on Raw is about to happen again on SmackDown. And then Roman Reigns comes to the ring and Rusev attacks Roman Reigns. And they beat each other before the bell gets rung. And all of a sudden, they're really beating each other up on the outside. It's turning into a brawl. And then all of a sudden, Rusev gets hit into the steel steps very hard. And to the ring post to the point where he's actually holding down the referees are back in the Roman Reigns. And they said, they pushed Roman Reigns to the back. And Rusev is unable to compete. What the absolute fuck is going on with this pay-per-view right now? They really had this great match on Raw that they gave away for free. And you could have put this on the network to promote $9.99. And then they don't do the match at all. Because I promise you they did not want Roman to win because he should be on punishment. But they don't want to make him look weak either. What the fuck is going on? Like, seriously, what is going on? And Roman Reigns comes back out and spirits Rusev. Good spirit, by the way. But that's how it is. It's like, is this a heel turn? I think it may be Roman Reigns' heel turn. If this is a heel turn, I'm like, okay, fine. Let's get a heel turn out of it. Let's get something out of it. But if this is no heel turn, I'm like, what the fuck do we get? What the fuck are we getting out of this? We're really not. You know what? 
let's just go to the main event. Oh, wait. Before we get to the main event, even before the Rooster Bench, we had to have a KFC ad with Colonel Dolph Zingler. This shit happened. Oh, you don't believe me? You don't believe me? You don't believe me? You don't believe me? Check this out. That shit really happened. Miz is really in a chicken suit. Dolph Ziggler is really in a colonel suit. He's really wrestling in the Miz in a chicken suit. And super kicks him and wins the match for Chicken Little. This happened at a live event somewhere. Had to be a dark match. Really? This is not SummerSlam. I'm not watching SummerSlam right now. I'm watching an extremely long episode of WCW Thunder. Because honestly, the second half reminded me of Thunder. Of WCW. And I'm a WCW guy. But Thunder, because that shit sucked. But you know what? This is what we came here for. This is what we came here for. Suplex City. We get Brock Lesnar versus Randy Orton. 15 years in the making. Okay. Okay. Let's see how this match goes. So it goes like it's supposed to. Brock is whooping Randy Orton's ass, and it looks like when he's when Brock is suplexing Randy Orton, he's like sandbagging, like Randy Orton sandbagging him. He's not, you know, jumping up back in the suplex. He's like he's standing there and just getting sandbagged over. So then Brock just starts really picking him up and just tossing him. Then he throws Randy Orton through the announce table. He just gets his ass beat. Then Randy Orton. RK owes Brock Lesnar to the announce table, but it did not say it was like Hogan. It didn't give. And then Randy Orton gets Brock Lesnar back into the ring, hits another RKO, one, two, kicks out. Oh, I guess that one RKO to Viperville took two to get to a two count. So, finally, Brock Lesnar goes for an F5, and Randy Orton kicks out. I guess it's probably one of the second people to kick out of an F5. Uh, and cut a couple years because Roman Reigns did it, so I know Randy Orton did. So Brock took off the gloves and he starts wailing on Randy Orton. I mean, he's hitting, he starts doing them UFC elbows, and you can see an elbow crack Randy Orton hit twice, and then blood just started gushing out. Randy Orton just started really bleeding, like bad. And then Brock Lesnar just wouldn't stop. He just kept coming there and wailing on Randy Orton. He got, he snapped. And then as the referee tried to put him away and tap, uh, See a check on Randy Orton, Brock Lesnar comes in again, hits him some more, then Shane has to come out like, yo, bruh, he, he's done, you, you fucked him up, leave, because, you know, Shane got, for some reason, got his tag in the front of his shirt, like, that bothered me, but anyway, Shane is trying to go to, to Brock, Brock just standing there like this, and standing there like that, and then Shane gets that five, and everybody's chanting, Goldberg, 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 but, you know, actually, that's the most I actually heard that we chant for Goldberg, they want him back. Goldberg didn't come out. Nobody came out. Brothers walks to the back, and that's how SummerSlam ends. SummerSlam, what the actual fuck, man? Really, what happened? The, the start, first of all, this whole thing should have been called Blotch a Slam. Because honestly, they blotched this whole night. There have been so many moves since the opening. Since Renee Young calling Booker T and King Booker King. Like, there's been blotches all over tonight, for real. And I'm like, what is actually going on? Really? And some and after the AJ Styles and Cena match, everything just started going downhill like this for me. And then it had a little slope like this for the Finn Balor, Seth Rollins, and this went back down. And I honestly, it was a disappointment. I'm not going to say it was a shit, horrible shit show, but I'm not going to say it was a great one of the best Summer Slams ever. It's not in my top five or my top ten. So honestly, I'm giving Summer Slam a 5.5 or 6. I'm in between there, which is honestly a D plus C minus range, to be honest with you. That's my thoughts on Summer Slam. Guys, what are your thoughts on SummerSlam? I'm tired of ranting about it. I'm about to edit this and go to sleep. When y'all see, when y'all see, because this is right after SummerSlam is over. How'd y'all feel about the match? How'd y'all feel about the second half of this pay per view? And what could they did more to change? Since they're gonna make this like a four hour thing, because I'm curious to know. So once that, post your comments down below. Hit the subscribe button for more videos. Tomorrow is the revamp of the channel. We got great things coming for you guys. And also make sure 
I know I said what special business is supposed to debut tomorrow, but we're gonna have to wait till next Monday for technical difficulties, things are going on. So I do apologize about that. So make sure you hit that like button if you guys like my review. So once again, this is NC, the place to be, chilling with your homie, Mustang Indy, and the Nerd Coalition is out.